Okay, so here's the scenario. You're making music in live, you're having a good time, and then you get to a point where you're going, hmm, I wonder if there's a way to do this or that inside of live. This could be in the form of an audio or a MIDI effect, it could be an instrument that doesn't quite exist yet, or it could be a simple tool to enhance your workflow inside of live. My name is Takuma Matsui, I'm a producer, instructor, and a Max developer here at 343 Labs in New York City, and in this video I want to talk about exactly that, extending Live's functionalities using Max for Live. We're going to explore some awesome devices, talk about the programming language of Max MSP itself, and share with you a device that I developed that you can download for free. So what is Max for Live? Max for Live extends the functionality of Live using a programming language called Max MSP. Max for Live devices can be found in the browser, where they're categorized as MIDI effects, instruments, or audio effects. Let's check one out. This one's called LFO, developed by Ableton. And this device lets you modulate different parameters inside of Live. If I click Map and click on a parameter, let's say a send amount, you can see that it starts modulating this parameter, an LFO would. Many devices are developed by Ableton itself, but many others are developed by indie developers. This is one of my favorites called AS Steps. It's a MIDI step sequencer. If I press play, it generates a MIDI sequence that I can feed into an instrument. This particular device is a little bit interesting in that it also has a modulator built in. Where like the LFO, I can map this to a parameter. Let's choose radius of collision. Other Max for Live devices are audio effects. This is one of my favorites called Disco, developed by my friend Alessandro. And Disco is a really interesting take on a delay that it's a spinning Euclidean delay. I have a drum sequence here. And if I turn Disco on, It turns it into an interesting texture. Many Max for Live developers create custom UI, giving the devices so much more personality and character. Other Max for Live devices can be instruments. This is one that I developed called Whistle, and it's a take on a physical modeling device coupled with granular synthesis. This device is an approximation of a bowed glass or vibraphone kind of instrument, and it sounds like this. You can change the tuning of the timbre. Or change the grain size. So most Max for Live devices look and feel like stock Ableton devices. What sets it apart is this edit button. And when I press on this, the device is opened by a different software called Max. I can open this up to reveal the internal circuits that make up this device. So what are we looking at here? This is the programming language of Max MSP. Max MSP is a visual programming language, meaning that all of these little squares are connected with these patch cables making up this digital circuitry. 
I know that everybody's dying to hear me talk about computer programming in this video, so here's what's going on inside. Some of these boxes are performing mathematical operations like multiplication or subtraction. Others are creating signal like this box creating a triangle wave at 0.5 Hertz. Others are talking to Ableton Live itself like this plug sync box which tells me if the transport is on or off. And others are UI elements, knobs, dials, and buttons that make up the visual interface of this device. So a couple weeks back, I went on the Ableton subreddit and I asked, hey, I'm making this video on Macs for Live devices and I wanna build a device that showcases its capabilities. And I got a lot of great suggestions. A device with a single macro knob that links to a folder of MIDI files, a tabbed modulator device with multiple instances of the LFO, Twitch, YouTube, chat API integration, and this one by Antivin had a lot of upvotes, a global MIDI scale change instead of putting one scale change in every MIDI channel. I interpret that as a scale device that stays synchronized between different tracks inside of a live set. I did write on the post that whatever suggestion gets the most upvotes I'm going to build. So this is the device that I came up with. It's called Funnel. I'm calling it that because it takes in a bunch of different notes and funnels it down to a scale. So let's start off with a chord progression in C major. Now Funnel is actually pretty intuitive. We can play this in a different tonic note. Let's choose E flat. We can also change the scale from major to something else. Let's pick something like Dorian sharp four. So the requested feature was that this device stays synced across multiple MIDI tracks. So let's put multiple instances of funnel. I'm gonna put one in the bass track one in the pluck, and one in the synth lead. So here's the entire track in C major. So if I wanted to change the instance of funnel to D major, all the other tracks will stay in sync to D major. If you want to keep some instances of funnel out of sync, I could press this lock button. And now if I change, let's say, the rest of the music to G major, the bass, the pluck, and the soft lead will stay in G and the chords will stay in D major. Funnel is available for you to download free from the link below. Now, you might be wondering, hmm, do I need to know all of this computer programming to make music? And the answer is absolutely not. But if you're interested in diving deep into Live's architecture or learn a little bit about digital signal processing, Max for Live is a great place to start. Like most programming languages, it does have a learning curve, but it's no more difficult than JavaScript, and it's infinitely easier compared to Python or C++, which is what VSTs are written in. I hope you found this video and funnel to be helpful. My name is Takuma Matsui, here with 343 Labs in New York City. For more information on our courses in New York, Berlin, or online, check us out at 343labs.com. Thanks for watching, thank you Ableton subreddit, and I'll see y'all next time.